Oh, that's a good fucking burger. Uh -huh. By the pastor and make sure that the tombs don't say more than a rapper, the young dying intellectual guy that stay focused. So, uh -huh. Skinny in the frame, but the name pulled away. Uh -huh. Butterfly effect, like I'm on the first day. Right, let's, just, let's just go in, just talk about things. Um, is this is a competition, like of who finishes at first. No, 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 we just <laughs> gonna chill, eat. <laughs> right, so that's good. Um, tell, tell me about that event at the lot, though. Yeah, so July 6th, it is a night of the Soul Lounge. I'll be headlining for the first time at the loft, and uh, I'm able to have my friends perform too. So I have Miles Young, he's a dope soul, soul and hip hop artist from Jackson, Michigan. Yeah. And, uh, two homies, uh, Wayne and Q Huff. I grew up with those guys, they're amazing. Then I have SB, uh, he's doing a beat set, DJ Omni is DJ, CJ the Gifted is hosting yeah. from 96.5. So it's gonna be a stacked night, and uh, I'm excited to perform a lot of new music. Let me get some air comes, man, this is gonna be messy. Yo, but um, Joey's in your band too. Joey, that that dude's in like every band. <laughs> Joey, yeah, everybody wants him. Joey is literally a part of every band. He has so many different band names that he probably has to remember. Oh my goodness! Yeah, but he's he's super talented. Everybody wants him. Dude, Joey's amazing, man. He he shreds. All the musicians shred, and they all have that chemistry because they've all been playing together for so long. Damn. They do so many different events together, so. It's good to be able to not have too much work to do. They do all the work, make me sound good, and I just show up and look pretty. Man, you you <laughs> done you done a lot in the like the last couple of years, man. Because I heard I heard about you while you were still in high school. Everybody was really? talking, yeah, everybody was talking about you. Oh wow, that was wild. Yeah, um, we've been able to do a lot, especially over the past few years. But it's been constant, uh, a lot of community work. And so I kind of rooted in art and music, so it's been pretty cool. The, the, uh, what you guys did with the Black Arts Matter, that yeah, was super dope. I appreciate it, bro. Yeah, we were able to do that two years in a row uh, at the Robin Theater. Both of them uh, were really big events. We were able to raise a lot of money, and then that all went to scholarships. And just being able to see people celebrate Black art. Like, people love Black art, but it's not always celebrated. Or the artists aren't really celebrated. Um, people love the culture, but not always the artists. And it's really dope to be able to uh, just put that at the forefront. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't I say this to a lot of people, but you like an old soul, man. You I can't say too much about it. I have a new album coming out. There's a song on it called Old Soul because I feel like that's what I represent. That's the music that I listen to. That's why I buy you. And I'm glad that you feel that way. Because you like, I feel like a lot of artists. Um, this is good as hell, bro. Well, thank you. Good shit. <laughs> I think that, like a lot of artists in, in particular, like they get like big headed kind of real quick, and mm -hmm. like it's all about them. Mm -hmm. Like they're like big fans of me. Yeah. But like the thing I heard about you was like you're a very given person. You like yeah. to to be so young and like think about like doing community stuff before mm -hmm. you you really just like you could have pocket all that. Yeah, for sure, easily. I mean, I think some of it just comes from uh, like before I was even doing music in high school, I was running like a little uh, different organizations and uh, just doing stuff with the youth in the community so that's always been big for me uh, so then when I did have the opportunity oh. to get all of this money at one time it's like why not give it back to the people that I work with every day or students that I see need it more than I do so it's been really dope to be able to support uh, upcoming artists and students I want to continue that so well, what made you like think of that that's that's nobody really So much pleasure. What? I'm like, yo, this is gonna be <laughs> <very> embarrassing. <laughs> so much pleasure. I love it. Um, I think, uh, like I said, just being able to do some of that stuff um, as yeah. a high schooler, yeah. it always stuck. So, like, when I got any type of platform, like, I wanted to be able to just kind of show that, hey, there's a lot going on in Lansing. You go here. Yeah, born okay. and raised. And um, I've been able to see so much just being in this area my whole life. I've been exposed to a lot, and it's really just a testament to all the people, the great people that are in the community. So uh, I wanted to be able to model that as well. Um, I wanted to be one of those great people that I saw coming up and be that for somebody else, and that's kind of where the heartbeat of that came from. Where'd you go to high school? Eastern. Nice, nice. So unfortunately, this is their last year. They're moving buildings, so that's pretty sucky. But yeah, EQ, I bleed blue and gold. Um. What got you into like hip hop? Um, let's see. I grew up um, in a pretty religious home. 
So a lot of your music's like that. So. Yeah, it it definitely has that influence. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's the live instrumentation inside of there, mm -hmm. or some of the references or whatever. Yeah. But like, I didn't really grow up listening to too much hip hop. Like mm -hmm. a lot of it was um, just like church music or um, just old school music or whatever. You play the keyboards, didn't you? Yeah, I grew, came up playing guitar, and keyboard, and drums a little bit. Um, but it wasn't until like high school that I started to like really discover uh, hip hop, and like I kind of started with some of the like older guys, I guess. It's like Tribe Called Quest. So. Uh, the Roots was my favorite just because they like uh, incorporated the live instrumentation. I love comments, so like all of that it was really dope, and like I could identify with it. Like I heard a lot of stuff that sounded familiar, and that really got me into it. But I've been performing since I was about maybe five years old. Like my mom used to write raps for my brother and I, and uh, we were performing at like talent shows and churches and stuff. And uh, we were called them Austin Boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's not, your mom wrote your ass. Mom, yeah, I still remember some of those, so that's how it started. I've been doing it ever since. So. That is so dope, though. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, you didn't. if you need a fourth, let me let me get your fourth. Sounds good. Appreciate it. <laughs> Sometimes they just don't stick together well. That's right, man. That's right. What else you got? You dropped your uh, couple singles. Yeah, I recently dropped uh, three singles yeah. back in March. Um, the song about being cool, the sunlight song, and the FaceTime song. I feel like I had to put out like a lot of content recently, so but I've been working on a lot. I feel like I've just kind of been in my bag, so to say. So I wanted to put out some music that was represent that represents that. Um, and I just really like the songs a lot. Um, they mean a lot to me, so I was happy to put those out. And then uh, I have some more coming out as well uh, this month and just leading up to the concert. So I have a lot of stuff in the bag, I guess. Oh, I like the I like the Michael Jackson thing. The, 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 the Michael hit. Jackson playlist. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. It was so catchy. That's, a, that's an old one. Yeah, that's off of my uh, my Lifted album. I dropped yeah. that in like 2017. And uh, okay. yeah, that was my first like real experience recording. And uh, it's cool that people still like hit me up. People like share that song and tag me on uh -huh. Instagram and just songs from that album. And for me, it's like just that older stuff sometimes it's like you feel the improvement you hear the improvement as an artist so mm -hmm. sometimes you don't like really going back and listening to it but the fact that it still means something to other people that it lets you know that it's still good so you and taylor taylor make a dope, a dope duo i appreciate it we had uh those two tracks together yeah. on that project actually and we were able to perform together a few times too so mm -hmm. it's definitely good energy and uh she's super dope and and what she does as well so i don't know, like Did you have a favorite band so you've done so far? Did you? Yeah, like a big one at CMU, right? I know that. Um, we did. No, not CMU. We did um, Alabat. Yeah. 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 Alabat was a lot of fun. So actually, my manager, um, he put that whole event together. He's a student that just graduated mm -hmm. at Alabat, mm -hmm. and uh, he coordinated that entire event. So it was super dope to be a part of that. Some really great artists on the bill too that I became fans of. So like Michigander was on it. I love Michigander. Uh, Gas Son, he's from Windsor. He was on it. Um, Monch and a few other guys. And it was really cool to kind of meet those new artists. But it was a lot of fun. Um, I think my favorite overall would probably just be the Black Lives Matter ones. So because yeah. for those events where it's like it's your baby, uh, something that you put together from beginning to end, and uh, something that has such a such a positive message and something that means so much to me is big, but we'll see. Uh, this upcoming event, this might this might top it though. Really? Yeah. I'm, I'm excited because <laughs> you've been pumping that one up. Yeah, and it's only gonna become bigger and bigger as it gets closer to it. But we're yeah. hoping uh, to get a good turnout. And I was telling my girlfriend just in the process of planning it, like if I can do anything else with this event, I want people to be able to hear my new music, but also be able to put my friends on display. So the people who might not have heard of them before. Um, can really just see what they're all about. And then uh, my two friends are performing. This is their first time performing, so it's really cool to have them a part of this. What made you stay in Lansing? Um, I think um, 
I don't know how long I'll be here. Yeah. Um, for the time being, like, I didn't want to go to a different university. Or, yeah. I mean, I don't even know. Like, college is, school has always been a struggle for me. So yeah. um, I started off at a smaller school here and then transferred to LCC. Um, so just kind of figuring it out and in the process of doing that, I felt like I was involved in a lot. Mm-hmm. Between the organization that I was running um, and then just all the other stuff that I was doing. So it kind of made sense to stay here. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just like, it was, it was really cool to get involved with more stuff, like the AOTA stuff and just meeting all the different people here. So I think that's what kind of kept me here thus far. Oh man, that's like, the entire group is so super dope. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you um? How do you get people involved in the community? How do I get people involved? Yeah, I think um, I try to just kind of create that platform for people. Yeah. Um, people who might still be trying to figure it out. We're always trying to figure it out. I think the biggest thing though is like as you're figuring it out, yeah. like not being greedy with it. Uh, I think a lot of people can. It's easy, like you said, like even about pocketing money or whatever. It's easy to be greedy, but yeah. uh, I think as we're figuring stuff out and just creating like opportunities and spaces for people that are around us, it helps everybody to grow. Yeah. So I think just always thinking about other people, always uh, referring other people, uh, whether that's putting on an event. Me and my homies, like if I can't do an event, I'm always referring one of my friends and vice versa. So. And that's just a community that, like, I want to build. It's something where we're all supportive of one another. Yeah, well, you've been with your girl for, like, four years? Yeah, four years as of uh, last month. But uh, we've known each other since we were little kids. Uh, that's for amazing. Really, really, really long time. So, actually, my cousin used to be her babysitter. So, she would come over for, like, Christmas and stuff. So <laughs> we were just actually talking about it before we came over here. We were in, like, friend zone for, like, seven years. It's crazy. It was, like, a... It's nice seeing you guys together, man. It's, I mean, like, it might sound weird, but like, sometimes, man, I feel like a lot of like minorities don't date within their own race group. Oh, yeah, for sure. And this is just like a, this is like, like being like seeing interracial couples is cool, mm-hmm. but like I feel like I don't even see people dating within their own race anymore. Yeah, like, I mean, and that happens a lot. I mean, for me, she's my black queen. You know what I'm saying? Oh, <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> And, I mean, even before we did, and that was the case, so it's, that's not going to change. Because, like, I, I know, like, in my community, uh-huh. I, I don't think I've seen it okay. ever. That's not a, that's No, not a, no, man. I've, I've, I don't, like, put out my, like, stuff out there like that. Uh-huh. But, like, <laughs> but, like, I think, um, I remember, like, one year ago, like, that was, like, last summer. Mm-hmm. And that was, like, a very short stint. Really? It was, like, out in Chicago. Mm-hmm. But, like... Why do you think it is that way? It just goes around here, just like, don't like, like, he just diss us all the time. I guess you. I'm like, you know what, like, it's, it's, um, I mean, I find them super attractive, but it's like, I don't, I don't, like, ever see them. I like to date, I want to, like, have them all, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't have, like, a situation you, like, where you knew from a kid, like, a young age, like, yo, this, yeah. this is, like, the bomb. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, I, I definitely feel. It's, when you get a diss too, man, it's sometimes it makes you want to try some different things. Because like, <laughs> sometimes, it make, it makes you, sometimes it make me mad, yo. Sometimes it make me mad. You're like, you know, because like, I'll see like a fine Asian girl, <laughs> and she's with like a busted white guy. Oh, yeah. Man, like, <laughs> like, bro, come on now. That's, that's the best you can do. <laughs> people, and people like, hate to admit it. Like, if you see like a fine black girl, and she's like, you're like, what is that, a busted white guy? You'd be like... Come on, come on. I would, I, you would feel some type of way. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, it makes me so well, mad. Yeah, who hurt you? Because <laughs> <laughs> um. <coughs> 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 a lot of those girls are like, sometimes they're like, they might be like adopted or something, right? Yeah. So they don't like, sometimes they don't even like know really about their culture. Mm-hmm. So it's not like, this is just like a dynamic I've been really trying to like deal with because like, um, even like even at my events, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it's just pretty much white people supporting, <laughs> <me. laughs> which is yeah. weird. Which is weird because I want to like, I I, I um, I want to reach out to different communities. Right? Yeah, for sure. And that was like the hardest part because we were like, um, I was like, I wanted to do like one about diversity in general. Mm-hmm. 
Um, because I looked at my co-host one day, I was like, yo, our list of people look very white. Mm -hmm. And I was like, we have an issue. Yeah. I'm you glad know, that you see that. I, uh, it's, I mean... <sighs> I think uh, a lot of it, I think there's a lot of things that play into it. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I've noticed just growing up in Lansing, yeah. um, it seems like a lot of times when cool events are going on, yeah. People of color typically don't know about them. Yeah. Um, people within just certain areas, I guess. Uh, sometimes I feel like events or promotion only travel so far. Um, but I think that a lot of it comes down to uh, just the conscious effort of like going to those people instead of expecting them to come see you. Because I mean, if I hear about an event that doesn't sound like something I would normally do, I might be hesitant to go. Yeah. Just because I don't know if I feel safe or whatever the case may be. Um, so just going to that, making that conscious effort or conscious effort to do that um, makes, I guess, it more inclusive. So that's one thing that I've been trying to do, just even with curating my events, because I've been in front of people and looked out and saw see white people while I'm talking about black shit. And yeah. It's like I I need to do something different so that um, it's more inclusive or it's more uh, just that diverse. I guess at the end of the day. I mean, like that's that's the thing that I've always been like really like shows to like the black community. They're very supportive of each other. Here and there. Yeah. It depends on uh, what it is. I feel like there's pockets um, yeah. of it. Um, I think it's just like in each community there's uh, just that learning, I guess, of how to be supportive. Um, My community they don't come out for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think the, I think it's consistency too. Like the more stuff that you're doing, the more events that you're putting on, the more that you'll see that. And that's one thing that I learned. Yeah. It's like when I first started, it wasn't like that. Yeah. But when they see that this is something consistent, and then they go there and experience, it's like, oh, this is pretty cool. And then something that, but it's 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 that work. It, it's that consistency that goes into it. Because the black, like the Black Arts Matter th event, uh -huh. that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, I, it was a lot of fun. Like, I see it, like, the pictures are wonderful, like, mm. I'm like, damn, we, because I would love to do something like that for my community, yeah. but, like, my community is more like, math, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, you know, maybe if I put a math ball on. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that would be exciting. Yeah, kids getting scholarships, I'm like, I don't need a scholarship, I already got one. <laughs> I'm sad, I don't want you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, it was, um, I think, partnering with, just kind of realizing that you can't do yeah. everything yourself. So, yeah. like, one thing I was really intentional about was partnering with other people who are already doing stuff within yeah. the community. So, Black, Arts, or Black Lives Matter was really huge. Yeah. Uh, just them promoting it, telling their people about it, helping me pass out flyers. Um, believe it or not, you're still going to find the most black people on Sunday mornings in the church. So, yeah. like, I went to churches. I handed out, like, handbills and flyers for that. Um and then just different organizations that got behind it um, and was sharing it. And mm -hmm. these are people who are already doing some of the work as well. So it was really cool to be able to not try to start something and expect them to kind of jump along, but kind of get people who are already on the trend and just make it this big thing where it's not me putting it on, but it's we doing something that needs to be done. So. Yeah, that's, 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 that's super dope, though. Like, I, I, I appreciate that so much because, like, I'm trying to take notes, man. I'm trying to take notes from you. Um, what do you think, like, like, I feel like a lot of, like, I'm nowhere into this. Mm -hmm. And I feel as though we're missing something, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of the times, it's harder to capitalize. Um, mm -hmm. uh, go ahead. What? Um, it's, it's harder to, like, capitalize on, like, financially. Like, we should, we should be doing a lot better. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of like lanes that aren't being fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And the best thing for me in poetry mm -hmm. is that they don't know how to build me. Yeah. And yeah. Like, it's, it's tough. <laughs> Do you know how to build yourself? I've, I've been learning. I've, um, you know Will Langford, right? Uh, I don't think so. Will Langford is a super dope poet. He's going to. Is that you open for? Um, no, that's, uh, that's Neil Hilborn. Will oh. Langford is a friend of mine. He's okay, from right, Detroit. Right. Um, I've been kind of like. Not to get into his shit, but he gets commas in his checks. Right? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, <do> that. <laughs> That's what I've been talking to him about. Yeah. I'm like, yo, I want to get a comma in that check. Same. Because the, the, the poetry room was like, we averaged less than 2,000 a person. Really? Yeah. Wow. 
and we gotta to cover our house now. I gotta to cover the photographer. Yeah. You know, and 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 after that, it's we could barely even cover a house. We, yeah. I mean, it's a packed. It's a it's packed. Yeah. But less than two dollars a person. Mm-hmm. I'm like, this is this is. So and that's just based off the donations. That's based off the donations and like, I mean, even even like. My events, mm-hmm. I don't know, man. Like, my, I, I I do well with other events, uh-huh. so it's there. Yeah, I think uh, for me, like, cause we didn't get a bunch of money like from our donations uh, yeah. when I was doing real time sessions. Yeah, there'd be a lot of people there like for some of the events. Yeah. Um, but since it was a free event, yeah. we couldn't really bank it all in donations because a lot of these people are coming here. You know, just to enjoy this free event. So, like, a lot of times they won't give donations or if they do it's something small. Um, but just knowing that there are other people with money out there, yeah. and then that's kind of, like, what I relied on. So, like, I know that the schools have money. Yeah. You know? So, instead of relying all of... Just relying on this free event to hopefully break even, um, we started running assemblies at schools who had these budgets, who wanted to get us involved, and then we started doing these really fun things um, that they were willing to pay for, yeah. uh, and then we used that money to do like the programming or the stuff, the expenses that we had, so that you know we weren't stressed out about it. But these one-time events that we were doing was covering everything for the entire year because. I mean, really, our expenses weren't, weren't that much, yeah. and I don't know how much you're paying uh, for the space at the Robin Theater. I know that Dylan um, definitely tries to help out as much as he yeah. can, um, and definitely in comparison in some places, yeah. like, I'm sure it's not that much. So if you're able to just get in front of somebody who has money, even if it's a one-time event or a two-time event or whatever the case may be, that 45 minutes or whatever it is might be enough to cover however many months of doing that event. And that's just what I learned because, you know, we got a comma <laughs> for doing that, uh, from doing uh, just work within the schools. And I yeah. was able to cover stuff. I was able to cover some scholarships. So. Damn. Because, like, I, I worked in, like, I, I did, like, workshops at Everett. Uh-huh. But I didn't ask them for anything because, like, it's Everett, man. Like, if it's, like, Ole Miss, yeah, yeah. I, want, I want that comma. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But um, I think some of it, too, is just realizing that they have money in their budgets that they yeah. have to use anyways. Yeah. So they have to bring people in from the community to do certain stuff. They have grants and uh, just different money setting aside for those different things. So you just have to tap into that and be like, well, while you're looking for all these other people to give these thousands of dollars to or whatever, here I am in the community doing the same thing that so-and-so might be doing that's coming from a different city or whatever. So I think it's just tapping in, presenting yourself, and then you have a track record. I mean, you've been doing it. Uh, you have hella sold out events. Yeah. And, like, it's already there, so it's the way that you present it and then get in front of them. Damn, because, like, that's crazy, because you could have you kept that. You could have oh, yeah. kept that. <laughs> I think back to it when it's uh, the first of the month. I was struggling. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that scholarship back. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy, though. Like, because, like, I, I honestly think that, like, the oh, oh like the thing about the open mic is that I think that like people want to feel like yeah. I wanted to create like more like a variety feel kind of yeah. sh- like feel to it, um and people get involved but like mm-hmm. it, I don't think people are really opening like there's a lot of space yeah. there's a lot of space it's a wild west right now. Uh-huh. At least, especially in my field, right? We, yeah. we pretty much do anything. Yeah, I was talking to, uh, what's his name? I think Brian, who does poetry at the Poetry Room, mm-hmm. he's doing that event uh, at the Loft. Um, but he was saying the same thing, that like when he goes to the Loft and asks, can we do this poetry event? They're like, I don't know anything about poetry or how we would do that. So like, because nobody's really done it before, you guys have the freedom to do it however you guys want to, which is super cool. Well, what, what do you feel like in the hip-hop space? I guess you wouldn't know, like, well, what is it like in the hip hop space? Like, it's like, cause like, I was like, you had your friends with everybody. Try to be. Well, I mean, <laughs> like, well, I mean, like, like I you, you get like Jose and James yeah. and 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 like, Serena and all them. Like, you guys seem like super tight, and you guys are like, is it like ever like competitive? Uh, I don't think it's competitive. I think the brotherhood comes first. Or, yeah. Uh, I feel like that's how it should be. Um, Man, especially cool. like especially like in the city like Lansing yeah it's like it's so small you know what I'm saying and there's no need to compete because uh, even if you do compete and you make it to the top you're at the top of Lansing so it's not like 
That's what I mean. So it's like, why can't we all win? Why can't we all? I mean, it seems like a lot of people have that community mindset. Yeah. Because that mindset is already there, then it's just the brotherhood and sisterhood or whatever the case may be, and then it's about the people um, and creating something for the people. And I don't know, that's, that's, that's how I got brought in. So like I met Jose. Uh, Jose was working at the same place that I was working at. Yeah. Um, and I just knew him as Tyson. So like I did yeah. for months, uh-huh. and I would talk to him. I always gravitated to him, towards right. him. There's always something that I liked about him. And then I would always hear him, just like in Spotify, he'd come up with my random shuffle playlist and shit. And then uh, one day I finally put it together. And I was like, oh, <laughs> you're Jose Floyd. <laughs> oh, shit. And then um, from there, he kind of brought me in to just like what was going on. Um, and I was able to just like, there's no competition. There's no like anything like that. Like when I came in, I was taking pictures. I was going to all the events, taking pictures, yeah. uh, getting in however I could fit in just because I wanted to be around that. Uh, I felt like that was what I always, you know, wanted to be around. And since it was there, it's like, this is cool. Let me be around this. Let me learn as much as I can. And now, like, I'm trying to do that as much as I can for other people. I know, like, I work in the school, so, like, I'm around young kids all the time. Who might be pursuing art or whatever. Uh, just giving them platforms, giving them opportunities. I have one student I'm going to call up uh, to do a little freestyle with my band at my concert at the law coming up. Uh, so just, like, creating the same thing that they were able to create for me is, is pretty big for me. Man, because that's that's crazy. Yeah. First time I found, I didn't know that he like he lived in this area. Yeah, he's he's a legend. So yeah. like it's it's crazy to be able to like just call a legend, whatever, or text him or whatever, or just see him around. And, uh, it'd be good energy, like, uh, and that's the that's the good part too. Because like a lot of people you meet, they're not you know really what they show that they are on social media or show what they are in the public eye or whatever. Like, you sit down and talk to them and you learn things about them. It's like, whoa, that's ugly. But uh, it's cool to be able to see those people and uh, really get to build with them and see, you know, who they are, what they are. Man, that's that's crazy, though. Yeah. Because, like, <clears throat> when I found him, it was, like, overseas tracks. Like, he, really? he, yeah, like, <laughs> he, he does all these tracks in Japan. Was he still Othello? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A lot of those, 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 and then like I just kind of followed him from there, and then yeah. to find out he was a, like in Lansing was like bananas to me. Yeah, it's like out of all places. Why are you here? It's crazy. <laughs> Serene homes and stuff. Yeah, it's like you guys are living, walking legends. And then I feel like a lot of the times I'm like, yo, these guys are going underrated. Uh-huh. Like you can go to the Avenue and they put these events on for free. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. They have tracks <laughs> with like Stro Elliott. Stro Elliott. I was uh. I hate just like I'm always just Jose comes across my random spot on my playlist all the time. Mm-hmm. It's always like a different crazy feature, like tall black guy. Yeah, I'm on with uh, what's his name, Jesse Boykins. Right. There. But I'm a big fan of him, so when I saw that, I lost my shit. And it's just crazy to see like how much they've done, but how much they still do, I guess, and still give. It's pretty dope. Cause I found Serene poems through um, uh, he he had a track with Mr. J. Madeiras. Uh-huh. Which I had went through like Mr. Like, Mr. J. Mazira's phase and uh-huh. like was a big fan. <laughs> uh-huh. And then um, I was dating a girl at the time and she took me to her church uh-huh. and he was growing. <laughs> I was like, I was fucking out. I was like, oh man, I don't even go to church like that. Same <laughs> 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 <Save out. laughs> like, why are you wilding out? <laughs> You didn't get it. <laughs> oh, <that's hard. laughs> I was like, this relationship might work now. <laughs> did it? No, 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 it didn't. It didn't. It didn't. That's hard. Yeah, it's it's crazy to see that. Like that was my same experience with oh, it's just like being in these spaces it's like, whoa, I know you. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that's super dope. Whew. Um, I have no idea. I have nothing else. Um to really ask you about, because I asked you, about, uh, did you want to plug in? <laughs> July 6th at The Loft, I'll be headlining for the first time. I'll be performing with the homies. I have A Block Wayne, I have Q Hef, I have Mal Jian, I have SB doing a beat set. DJ Omni is going to be rocking all night long. CJ The Gifted is hosting for us, and it's going to be a great night. So I'll be doing a bunch of new tunes, music that you've never heard before, and I'll be doing it with the band. So come hang out with us. Just waiting for your moment like proper preparation got me ready.